So this, <laughs> this is the second experiment. It's very long. I don't expect you to read, but just give you a feel. It's the same format as the Gardner, you know, the spray <laughs> question. So basically we have, we ask them what type of control, what's the purpose. So I want to point out these sets of questions are giving both pre and post. Can you go back to the previous slide for just a second? Sure. Okay, thanks. So these sets of questions are giving pre and post. And these four sets of questions gave only to uh, as a post, okay? So the pre and post are not identical. Four questions are identical, we gave to pre and post, but the four additional questions are given only to the, uh, as post. And how do we administer? Okay. So, Get back to Sandra's question. 78 took the pilot version of the assessment, and we found about 57% students don't understand positive control, 40% failed to recognize the negative control. And the same observation uh, um, observed for the students. Basically, whether it's a long version or short version, we find a very similar uh, pattern as in students. So students in fall, cell biology lab 09, uh, took the post-test and have the same similar results as the TA. And in spring semester, this semester, 40 students took both the pre and the post in the class, in the first week or the last week of the class. Like I said, it took them about uh, for the pre-test, about 15 minutes, and the post-test, because the four additional questions, it took students 30 minutes to complete. So although, you know, it's really just one or two questions, because that it's involved a lot of thinking, it takes them some time to do. So when we analyze the pre-post-test questions, uh, for the question one, Remember, that's the one about Alzheimer's drugs. And uh, we asked, is there positive control in this experiment? In the pre-test, about 50% of students answered yes. So that really showed us students have a terminology confusion, right? They think that a placebo is a positive control. A placebo will not generate any expected result. It should, it's a negative control. So. In the post-test, all the students answer placebo genetic control. So I think at least clarify the terminology confusion for the question one. The second part of the question one is asking, based on this data, was the drug effective? 37.5% of students says yes, which is the wrong answer. Mm -hmm. And the post-test, a very similar percentage of the answer is yes, so there's virtually no change, which kind of is nice to serve as a kind of in, uh, control for our study because we did not specifically teach or try to help students with that mathematical reasoning. I don't know what you're going to do next, but could you explain what a positive control would be in that experiment? And, and also, I don't. I don't know what reasoning you're supposed to use to figure out whether the drug is effective. It's a very simple it mathematics. It probably is, but... Yeah, I think you just do the fraction of the working out working in each group. Okay. So the fraction, you know, um, it's very similar. So it's not effective. Okay. So you want a much stronger... Yeah, students, some students do the math right, but they still conclude it wrong. I don't understand why. Well, it seems, to, I mean, just looking at those numbers, um, there was a slightly larger effect for the experimental group than the placebo group. Yeah. So what you need to do is not just, I mean, so you need to be able to decide whether slightly larger is slightly enough larger. So you, you, you also need to be able to sort of do some error analysis in your head. You know, if the ends had been 100 times bigger, um, then I don't, yeah. you know, I, I'm not sure if I could figure out what the right yeah. answer was. So, so the it point just seems like an intrinsically more difficult problem. Yeah. 
So if students give a reasoning, say, why is that? You know, the difference is not big, I cannot determine, need more analysis, that's fine, too. So if they give an explanation, what are they thinking in the right direction, we consider, you know, it's not, um, but the most likely it's not effective based on the calculation. Of course, the sample size is not the same. The other factor may, you know, influence the results. But based on the, re the number, it's most likely it's not effective. Um, so, so it's kind of nice control because we didn't teach students. We don't expect, expect them to do better unless for some reason they take math or other reason can influence their, you know. Yeah, I guess I don't know offhand how, what exact, what they would be doing in another course that would help them. Yeah, so we basically them. don't see any changes. It took a statistics course that semester. Maybe. I certainly <laughs> didn't learn that in my statistics course. Um. By the way, can I, so I, I'm still struggling with what's the difference between positive and negative. So can I try and answer the question and yeah. see if I can get Oh yeah, right? sorry, oh, I didn't. So, so let me make, so go back. Um, what would be a positive um, yeah, control? That's, so that's if, a good, that's if there's good. already a drug on the market, okay. which uh, has been demonstrated elsewhere to um, to, to a cure or to cure this whatever it was, um, and you gave that to a group, and, and you got a and you got a good positive result, that would be a positive control. That yes, this group, the the, the drug that's supposed to work works. And now the experimental drug, we're trying to decide if it also works. Is that, is that what positive means? I think so. Although it's difficult to, you have to find the drug is acting on the same mechanism, you know? That would be like a, if it's just a different password, you know, different mechanism, you, you can't really mm -hmm. use it. So in this case, what your question is, it's, it's right? actually bringing a good point. It's like, <laughs> in, exper in biological experiment system, we wanted to have both positive and negative control. However, sometimes it's not possible to have so both. It's, in this case, <laughs> basically there's no positive control. I mean, a lot of, in a lot of cases, wait, your positive wait, controls wait, are just... Sorry, so why would it have to be the same system? Could you be testing that you wrote the instructions clearly and people are actually taking their pills? as part of your positive control? Well, that's a, that's a different sort of issue that you're looking at. So one of the things that you're often doing, so if we go back to this drug research that you're, you're looking at, one okay. of the things that you're yeah. often comparing yeah. is the issue of, is this new drug the same or better than an existing drug? So you know whether or not somebody is or isn't taking, if somebody keeps forgetting to take their pills, you're actually just going to exclude them from the study as an outlier. So a lot of cases what the positive controls we run into in biological experiments, this is what a lot of mine often were, were tests to make sure that the experiment itself was actually working, that all of your reagents were functioning properly and were specific to the system that you were looking at and things like that. Like you run a standard, I guess, is what okay. we do sometimes. It's yeah, like a, a lot of the positive controls really will be like standards okay. to make sure that things are behaving the way they've always done through all of the iterations. Okay. So in this educational study, <laughs> were there any positive controls? You mentioned that there was a negative control, maybe yeah, there was a group no. of students who didn't take the course. <laughs> we don't. Like I said, it, it, ideally you probably could have both. So yeah. what would that look like? What would a positive control look like for this? If someone experiment? like Andrea wants to repeat our experiment, she would use our <laughs> protocol, you know, to run in a session um, or another like i5 whatever they want to run the lab they can use our protocol to to do something that would be their positive control and then they design something different i see so, so she would run uh, one class like you ran your class and then she would have a different class with her with own a yeah whole different testing. set of but but of course these materials wouldn't work for geoscience <laughs> i'm saying that's what i'm saying like similar like i5 the topics are similar like i5 another biology so if you had some intervention that you had documented that it worked to produce something that you want to produce. So yeah, that's it. are positive that's controls useful for when you're trying to improve something? Can you like, say that again? So it sounds to me like positive controls are useful when you already have something that you know works. And you want to compare And you want to see do. whether something works better. Or as well as. Or as well as. Yes. 
So but if you're I just sort of mucking around with something that you don't even know whether it works. I don't know how you. Well, I think in education research is not. It's, it's different. <laughs> not you know, biology. I mean. <laughs>